smartphone macro photography. Now that's a twist, right? All with the help of Topaz Gigapixel AI. Let me show you how to do it today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Last week, I was doing some shopping at my favorite home improvement center. And at this time of the year, they always bring out their flowers. And my wife loves to plant new flowers in the spring at our home. And so I'm looking around at the flowers. But guess what? I had to pull out my smartphone because I thought, you know, the best camera that you have is the one that you have with you at the time. And I thought, there's some really beautiful flowers here, and let me see what kind of shots I can get on my smartphone. And this is one of those shots. Now, you know what? I took this with the thought that I would really do an aggressive crop on this image and see what Topaz Gigapixel could do to upsize this. I went ahead and made a virtual copy of this image just so I could show you what my crop looks like. And this is my crop. Now let me go ahead and click on the crop tool. But you can see it's a very aggressive crop. I've cropped out a lot of pixels here. But if Topaz Gigapixel AI can bring back detail and pixels here and I can make a nice big print out of this, I would be really excited because now I can use my smartphone as a as a very capable camera for my photographic needs. And I'm sure you generally always have your camera with you, so you don't have to miss any photo opportunities. And by the way, this is a DNG RAW file. I use my Lightroom camera app to shoot this image in the RAW format. Now, I use RAW so I can get the most out of my editing when I'm doing some aggressive editing on images, but if you shot it in JPEG, I'm sure you would get great results as well when you send it into Gigapixel AI because it will work with JPEG or RAW, but I like to start out with RAW. I'm going to go ahead and go to the library module, and if you'll notice, this image is a 4032 by 3024. Now it's cropped down to a 1 by 1 ratio, aspect ratio. It's 1014 by 1014, so as you can see, I've really reduced the amount of pixels in it. But now it's time to see what kind of a job Gigapixel AI can do at upsizing this image and possibly enable me to get a nice big print out of it for my wall. Oh, and by the way, uh, you can get the image quality bundle on sale. That's Gigapixel, Denoise AI, and Sharpen AI all for one price of $159.99. That's like a uh, $99.98 savings. Plus, you can use my promo code David Kelly and save an additional 15% off that complete bundle, which is a nice savings. By the way, I did not apply any noise reduction to this, and I just used the default sharpening in Lightroom. And if I need further sharpening, I will use Sharpen AI to take care of that. But now to edit this, all we need to do is right click on the image, come to edit in, and go to topaz gigapixel ai i'm going to go right out of lightroom and i'm going to send it out as a tiff file in my typical color space of pro photo rgb but you have other choices in here like adobe rgb or srgb or your display and uh, i always like to use my bit depth at 16 bits you have your choice between 8 and 16 i recommend 16 and resolution if i was going to print this on my epson printer i would use a resolution of 360 because that's what they recommend, and I never use compression. And now let's click Edit. It'll fire up Gigapixel, and we'll see what we can do. Here we are in Gigapixel AI, and I'm on version 6.0.0, and I think that's the latest version. And if you've let your license lapse, you can go ahead and renew your license and get the latest version. This is a really good version, in my opinion. You can even use my promo code, David Kelly, and save 15% off your license upgrade. So that's kind of nice and that gives you a little extra savings. If we come down here and look, we can see that the original image is a 1014 by 1014. And if I upsize it six times, which I have it set for six times, now I'm on scale. You can also use these other means of upsizing width or height. But I'm gonna use scale and that's generally the one I want. But if you know the actual size you want, you can use either one of these. But at 6x, I could easily get out of that, like say a 20 by 20 or a 24 by 24, or maybe even slightly bigger than that. 
And the fact that I shot this on a smartphone is pretty exciting. Now with Gigapixel AI, we have different AI models. Right now I'm on standard, but we have lines, art and CG, low resolution, very compressed. So we have different choices here. Now I have done a very aggressive crop. So I think I would either want to use say low resolution or very compressed. I could try lines. Art and CG is for art pieces, so I wouldn't use that. And by the way, there's different ways that we can view. We can come here into this uh, comparison view where we can compare four different models at once. But I generally like to have my full image up on the screen. And sometimes I like to use this uh, split view where I can see on the right will be the result and on the left would be the before. So I like the split view a lot of times. Or if I use this first icon for single view, all I do is left click with my mouse and hold down and I can see the before and after. So a lot of times I use this because it's very convenient. And there's basically only three models I want to compare. I'm going to compare the standard. Give it a second here to update. Here's the before and here's the after. Let's try low resolution. Okay, here's the before and here's the after. That's not bad, that looks pretty good. And let's try very compressed. Here's the before and here's the after. And that one looks good too. But I'm thinking maybe standard. Let me try standard here. I think it looks a little sharper in standard. I may suppress the noise a little bit more by dragging this to the right. Give it a second or two to update here. Here's the before and here's the after. And I think I like that. And what else I like to do is look around the image and make sure you know, go to a different spot and let it render out again and make sure there's no kind of weird artifacting going on. And that looks really good. And let's come down here. And that looks really good as well. So I think I'm going to go with that. And I think with low resolution, it was just, I don't know, it just didn't look quite sharp enough for me. However, I could try to bump up the remove blur here. So let me try that. Let's really move that up and see if that helps it. It helps it a little bit, but it looks a little soft. So I think I'm going to go back to standard with that extra remove blur turned up to sharpen it up just a little wee bit. And I like it and I think it looks really good. There's no artifacts. So now at this point, all I need to do is click apply. And I'm going to leave this in real time so you can see how long it takes to process this image out. And wow, that was really quick. And I think if you have a later model computer, you're going to be really happy with Gigapixel's processing times. And I'll tell you what, I'm really happy with these results. I know I could get a nice big print out of this. Let's zoom in and get do a little pixel peeping here. I'm zooming into 100% magnification. As you can see, I got a lot of sharpness here, a lot of detail. And I think it looks really, really good. So... I am happy with this. And one thing I will say about a smartphone, even if you have a phone with just a single lens. Now, I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, which uses the ultra-wide lens to shoot these images, okay? For macros, you get a lot of depth of field, which is really good. So you get a lot of nice detail in your macro shots, which is an added feature of using a smartphone, even if it just has a basic wide-angle lens you'll still get great depth of field. So I started out with this image and I end up with this image right here, which to me is really amazing. Thank you, Gigapixel AI. You're a welcome tool in my photography toolbox. Well, there it is, everyone. Get those smartphones out. Get out there and find some images, even if you have to go to your favorite home improvement store. That's a great tip for you. Go down and get some images when you're buying your flowers. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.